Hello friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Katja and I love sewing and crafting. I bought this needlepoint pillow kit last year when I visited the V&A Museum in London. I've dabbled in needlepoint before, but this project is on a different scale. The pattern is based on an embroidery panel created by Mrs. Archibald Christie in 1914. This video is just me slowly sewing and chatting, so make yourself a cup of tea, take your sewing and join me for this relaxed sewing session. And sorry if I sound a little stuffy, it's the allergy season again. The first thing to do was to complete the color swatch guide. This makes it easier to determine which yarn to use, especially since some of the colors are very close to each other on the color spectrum. And now I'm ready to start. I leave a small tail of yarn on the wrong side and it will get attached to the first stitches. I don't like to use knots that one might feel through the finished embroidery. The stitches are done in a diagonal direction. I started with this apple branch that is a small and easy color area to fill. I've already done quite a lot of it. I started with this big butterfly and I've done also two butterflies here and here and these others are still unfinished. There are a lot of colors that are really close to each other like here. There is this bright green that you can see, then there's this darker green, and then there's this patch of olive here that is really hard to see, and then it turns to dark brown. And I need a really good lighting to be able to see the difference in colors. And what I'm trying to do is what I do in here, and I'm trying to sort of do every other color so that I know how much space to leave between colors because then it gets a little bit tricky if you have, for instance, if you are doing the outline, especially with this big white background, if I start doing it around these, these areas which have a lot of really, really small areas, there is uh, brown, dark green, bright green, white, beige and brown and it's really hard to see how much room to leave for all these tiny rows which end up looking something like this here. So what I do is I do first these. I try to do, for instance, brown and bright green, beige, and then I know how much room to leave for white and brown. And only then I can go around and add the white I also try to first go around the edges so that if I end up picking up threads of this darker color it doesn't spread further because I want to have really clean white background but because of these really tiny details I cannot start with the background because then I might uh, not be able to leave enough room for these tiny details. Adding the white here. I don't have that much white left anymore. Here is my bundle of threads. As you can see, I haven't actually taken this out, but I just 
take the side which has the ends and I pick the loop of the right color like white and then I just pull pull and it comes off the bundle pretty nicely let's see we could do this and then or hmm I might do this one and then finish this and then go upwards. This has still some of the etching that is unfinished because I ran out of bare strength. But let's do it. So it's this one here. This is what the wrong side looks like. It's actually, I like it. It's sort of chaotic. And there are some little bit longer loops where I jump from one side to another. But these long loops get tied pretty well when I progress. And besides, this is going to be the wrong side of the of the pattern. I've ordered an embroidery frame or embroidery stand fit for this kind of big tapestry work. And I hope it's going to arrive soon because I'm losing the stiffness of the canvas a bit as I'm working with this. So um, what I usually do is, uh, wait a second, I just, because I have this, I'm sitting on the floor like I usually do. I'm just not adult enough to sit on a chair. And I have this um, little food stool that I place my work on. What I usually do is, wait a second, like here. I'm trying to position the piece that I'm working on at the edge of the stool, like this. So that my work is mostly supported and then I can use my both hands because when I was trying to stitch with just my right hand my hand got really sore from gripping the needle so this way I can distribute the strain for my hands a little bit better and here I have to make a judgment call like whether to leave this stitch better I do it in brown or white I think what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add a white here and then I'm going to switch directions and I'm continuing upwards so there I have to do a lot of these little judgment calls here although this has been printed really well so Mostly, you can tell where you are supposed to put the stitches, but still, it's not always so clear. So, here I'm filling this one area going back and forth I'm always, even if I'm working on smaller areas, I'm always using one thread to the end. So if I finish this flower and then I move to the second one, and if I don't have areas close to each other so that, so that I can jump, I just find a place where the same color has been used. Now, whether to add a white here, let's add white here. But more I work on this piece, the more I love it. Because I can see how these flowers and butterflies just pop up from the canvas when I fill them with stitches. And I'm going to love the outcome, I know it. And this is really relaxing to do. And I can 
literally sit here for hours and work on this because I can't just listen to an ebook or or podcast and just do this. This is very meditative work. I have been working on this embroidery for a while and I've noticed that my arm is starting to get hurt from moving the needle to different sides and it's a little bit hard even to support this canvas on something to be able to use both hands. So what I did, I ordered this from Etsy. It just arrived. It came pretty fast, like in a, in a week or perhaps two. I'm not sure when I ordered, but it came from Ukraine. So this was a good chance to support Ukrainian business. The shop is called All About Embroidery UA. So if you want to buy a similar one, I put the link down below. And let's open it up. So I'll slot this here and put this like so. Okay, so here is the frame. Okay, this is sort of the wrong way around, so I think I should just... I could just turn these clips or just turn the... Now this is really sturdy. I haven't even tightened this all the way. And it feels really well made actually. And now I can take my embroidery work clips Do I need to remove the last ones? Yep. Just put it here and just Just 
actually it's a good idea to start clipping it from the end okay so here it is this looks so cool um yeah it's dried out i could use this on a on a sofa, on a, on a couch, or on a desk, or just sitting on the floor because, like Rachel Maxi would say, I am a floor troll. I just have never learned how to sit like an adult. I have to find the right angle. I think this actually straighter angle is better. Oops. I just have to find the right. This is too high. So now let's put it down a bit. Perhaps I should try to fold this backwards and then I could, yeah, let's try that. So there are several ways one could use this. And I think these, I want to have more space here. Now this looks good. So now I have the legs situated like this and now I can move my hands freely from the side which is nice because my thread is long and I can pull it here Once I find the right way of positioning this, it's just easy to work. And if I tighten this enough, I might be able to even... Yeah, I'm able to rest my hand here. So I don't have to hold it up, which is good for my shoulders. I have run into a slight problem here with these diagonal lines. It seems that the printed diagonal line is not following the canvas direction, or maybe more accurately, the canvas is not completely straight. However, I'm forced to follow the 45 degree line with my stitches. This means that I have to adjust the pattern a bit while I stitch.
some reason this is different than all the other ends here I don't see why it is that so I'm fixing it I'm taking this away and adding this and then I'm just going straight and I think I'm going like this and then coming back from here and it immediately starts twisting so Let's see. So here is six. Again, there's three and seven, so ten. So ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, and then six and three is eighty nine plus 4 because I added that 89 plus 4 is 100 and no <laughs> 90 89 plus 4 93 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 40 50 60. and there's 95 okay there is a slight difference okay I've thought about it and what I think is that I will do that end. I will do this pattern here. Then I start from this end and come here and see where these collide. And then from here I go to this side and I probably have to move these six squares here because they will be in the wrong place as as. Well, I need to move these. I need to move the whole pattern this way. So I might have to move like start, switch the colors a bit or something like that. It might make it easier to make this pattern here. But yeah, doing the etching is not very fun. But if I do these, these are a difficult thing and I want to have this room to make the white here. And I also, if I move this too close to this and I then start making this, it means that this will probably collide with the butterfly here and I don't want to do that. So I'll just make this here now and I am not going to complete this. And my... I will open up these here and these here and scroll a bit so that I can access this end.
and it's done. A whole total of 36,864 stitches, all finished. I draw the dimensions of the pillow on a piece of old sheet. Then I pin my finished canvas on the cell foam underneath the sheet. I spray the canvas generously with water and let it dry. Now the work is dry. I went and bought this silk to make the backside of the pillow. I also found this nice piping that I sewed to the seam. The piping needs to be sewn first to the seam. I'll cut slits here to force the piping around the sharp turn at the corner. Then I sew both sides of the pillow together and turn the pillow around. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and remember to click the bell, otherwise you don't get notified when a new video comes out. See you soon. Bye!